What if I told you that a simple rounding error caused a missile to miss its target by nearly two football fields? Or that NASA lost a $125 million spacecraft because someone forgot to convert units? Today, we're looking at some of the biggest math mistakes in history and how calculus plays a role in avoiding them. And stick around because we're actually going to solve some of the math behind these disasters so you can see exactly where things went wrong. NASA engineers spent years designing the Mars Climate Orbiter, only to watch it burn up in the atmosphere because they forgot to convert between metric and imperial units. One team used Newton seconds, the other used pound seconds. The result, a miscalculated trajectory that sent the spacecraft spiraling into Mars atmosphere at the wrong angle. We can illustrate this with an example. Suppose the velocity of a spacecraft is given by this function, v of t, where v is measured in kilometers per second and t is time in seconds. Now, to find the total distance traveled by the spacecraft over the first 10 seconds, you can take the definite integral from t equals 0 to t equals 10 of our velocity function. And in this case, we don't have to worry about taking the absolute value of v of t since this particular function is always positive. The antiderivative will be t cubed minus 1 half t squared plus 2t evaluated from 0 to 10, which gives us 970 kilometers. Now, here's where the error conversion comes in. Suppose a mission control team mistakenly calculated the trajectory in miles instead of kilometers. And let's assume a conversion factor of one kilometer equaling 0.621 miles. Then we have that 970 kilometers is equivalent to approximately 601.37 miles. So we see what a serious discrepancy there is when not using the same unit system. In this case, 970 versus 601. Now, if the wrong unit was used in force calculations, the spacecraft could have been off by hundreds of kilometers, enough to completely miss its target and burn up in the atmosphere. Now let's talk about a military disaster. During the Gulf War, the U.S. used the Patriot Missile Defense System to intercept enemy attacks. But due to a rounding error in the system's clock, one missile missed its target, leading to a catastrophic impact that could have been avoided. The system tracked time using a floating point number, but after several hours of operation, the tiny rounding error accumulated into a 0.34 second delay. That doesn't sound like much, right? But at Mach 5, or about 1700 meters per second, that delay meant the missile was off by 578 meters. That's almost two football fields. This is a real world example of limits. Suppose the error in the system's tracking followed this function E of t. What we're interested in is what happens to the error in the long term. So let's take the limit as t approaches infinity and see what happens. Using the squeeze theorem, we can show that the limit of the quantity E raised to the negative 0.05t times sine of 0.1t equals zero, so the limit of e of t equals 0 minus 0.34, which is negative 0.34. Now what this means is that over time, the error never disappears, and the system can never fully correct itself. In missile defense, that's unacceptable. The next mistake is one of my favorites to study because it's a perfect example of resonance, which is a key topic in differential equations. Resonance is when an oscillating object causes another object to oscillate at a greater amplitude. This is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. If you've never seen this footage before, well, let's just say the bridge was doing its best impression of a roller coaster before it collapsed in 1940. So what exactly went wrong? The wind hit the bridge at just the right frequency to cause excessive oscillations, leading to catastrophic failure. 
In physics and engineering, we model these oscillations using second order differential equations. Say for example, a bridge's oscillation can be modeled by the following differential equation. The solution has two parts, the homogeneous solution, which describes the bridge's natural motion, and the particular solution, which models the wind's effect. Solving the characteristic equation for the homogeneous part, we get the solution y sub h of t equals e to the negative 0.05t times c1 cosine of 1.4t plus c2 sine of 1.4t. Now this represents damped oscillations, meaning the bridge's natural motion slowly dies out. Next, we move to solving for the particular solution. And since the forcing term is sine of 5t, we assume a solution of the form a cosine 5t plus b sine of 5t. Substituting this back into the original equation and solving for a and b, you can get the steady state solution. Now for resonance to occur, the forcing frequency needs to match the natural frequency. In this example, the natural frequency of the system found from our homogeneous solution is approximately 1.4 hertz. The forcing frequency from the particular solution is 5 hertz. So in this case, resonance does not occur. But if the wind had a frequency closer to 1.4, then the oscillations would amplify. And that's what happened with the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. The actual wind force frequency matched the bridge's natural frequency, causing oscillations to grow uncontrollably, leading to collapse. The final mistake we're covering today is the Ariane 5 rocket explosion. This was a $370 million loss caused by a simple number conversion error. The software tried to fit a 64-bit number into a 16-bit storage space, causing an overflow error that led to mission failure. This relates to calculus because when engineers approximate functions, they often use Taylor series. The problem? If you truncate a Taylor series too early, you can introduce too much error. Let's look at an example to give you an idea of what that entails. Say we're modeling the height of a rocket using a Taylor polynomial of order 3. It could be something like h of t equals 10 plus 3t minus 0.5t squared plus t cubed over 6. If we truncate this at t squared, we get a polynomial of order 2. Let's call it h hat of t and it equals 10 plus 3t minus 0.5t squared. Now let's compare the values of these two functions at say t equals 4. The original polynomial gives us a height of 24.67 meters, where the truncated function gives us a height of 14 meters. That's over 10 meters of discrepancy. In spaceflight, this kind of miscalculation can be catastrophic. So what did we learn today? Small math mistakes can have huge consequences, whether it's unit conversions, limits, differential equations, or truncation errors, every calculation matters. Now, imagine making a small mistake on your next calculus exam. Okay, maybe that won't cost you millions, but it might cost you an A. To avoid that, be sure to check out my other video lectures on calculus one, two, and three, differential equations, and so much more, all right here on my YouTube channel. The video lectures corresponding to the topics covered in this video are all linked in the description, so be sure to check them out, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and I'll be back sooner than later.